Corey here with the Art Archaeologist channel and today I'm sitting in my kitchen I've got it all set up for a coffee staining session and as you can see <laughs> I've been at it for a few days uh, this is inspired by Mrs. Cog that's her channel Mrs. Cog she um, has a paper staining video she uses tea in hers and I prefer to use coffee but this video is inspired by her tutorial and I invite you to check out her channel she's got some amazing things on there so uh, here's what I use I use this Don Francisco's coffee and you can get this at just about any grocery store and I use the vanilla nut flavor because it the smell of this coffee stays with the paper for a long time and fabric too. I did a bunch of fabric. I'm going to show you that in a little bit. And the one thing I did wrong with the fabric was I did not put vinegar in it. So if you're going to do fabric, I definitely recommend throw a cup of vinegar in your uh, your coffee bath, okay? So I wanted this batch really dark. So I did two pots of the Don Francisco's Vanilla Nut. And I do a full pot with six heaping teaspoons of that per pot. And then I used an entire thing of this little um, instant coffee. I used the entire little jar. And I get these at the dollar store. So my stuff came out even a little sticky, but very dark. So um, you can vary your darkness by how strong you make your coffee. Now, I wanted to show you a few things. I got this set of Tim Holtz Sizzix uh, Skeleton Leaf Die Cutting Set. And here's how they look. Oh, let me hold that up. It's not going to work, is it? Let me just get these off of here. They really come out beautiful. And I did some, I actually was able to put these prints on my coffee stained papers. And I'll show you those in a minute. These come out so beautiful. This one is the absolute toughest because of all the detail. I know it's tricky to see. But, um. Uh, Here's what I did with them. I cut them. And here's what I did. I put the little die cuts that I cut out onto some coffee stained paper. I took it out of the bath wet and put the leaves on the paper wet and then put this in the oven. It does require to get that much of a um, imprint on your paper requires heat. You will not get results like this without heat. It, that's been my experience with it, okay? So let me go through these real quick. And I'm going to show you some more stuff in a minute. I just wanted to run through these. They came out really nice and defined. Now this, I had, there's the leaves. Came out beautiful. And I have these chipboard cutouts that I bought uh, on eBay a long time ago, and I thought I would try to use them. Let me show you. And these are cut from really thick chipboard. And when you put them on the wet paper, these get soaked wet. And it was taking forever to get everything dry. So I really do not recommend using this thick stuff here, okay? It just... It didn't come out near as well as I wanted it to. This came out pretty good. It came out okay, usable. But there's sheets in here that didn't. So here's an example. I'm only going to show you one. I don't want to spend a lot of time on what's not working. I'd rather spend time on what is. So they're really thick die cuts. If, it, if these were cut out of thinner paper, they would have come out much more detailed, much better. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is some lace that I cut up. Here's the piece. I have this. I, I don't even think that this is lace. I think it's a, 
I'm sure plenty of you know better than me what this is called. It's a certain kind of tacking, I think. I could be wrong. But this made this print. And again, I actually put my, I just dropped my lace in the dye bath before I put it on the paper. Because when I first did this, I put the lace on dry and it wasn't sticking to the whole sheet. There were parts where it had popped up and I didn't get a print. So I wet the whole piece and I got a beautiful complete print when I wet it. Here's another kind of lace. This is actually from an old lace curtain. Same thing. Here it is. And I cut these pieces to fit the eight and a half by 11 sheets and I'll be showing you a little bit more of this stuff later. So that's all that. Now this tool, I'm just wanting to give you as many quick tips as I can here. This tool, it's Spellbinders Tool in One and it's a must have tool for intricate dies. Get up there. What it is is a wire brush on that rolls. Okay, and then it's got a really sharp pokey end on this end and then a spatula. And if you follow the instructions on here, very easy to use. Um, these leaves become much easier to cut. I do not have a lot of time to spend poking little pieces out of die cuts and I absolutely have zero patience for that. So <laughs> um, that tool, I it took me a long time to buy it, but I'm so glad I did and I was actually even kind of upset with myself that it took me as long as it did. I should be an affiliate for these products. Um, I'm not. I'm not making any money off these products. I'm just trying to make your crafting life more fun and easier by showing you what I use. So, I should be though. I should be making money off of them. Um, these little bookmarks I stained and I wanted to show you these. Because I coffee stain them and then I spatter them on top of that. And then, here is one that I use a just a lid I have a little set of different sized lids and I just dip it in my coffee bath and go sh sh you know very simple okay I'm back I just paper cut my finger reaching for these they're so thick um, I wanted to show you now when you do a really dark batch like this this is what I got this is how dark these pages came out. And the reason I ended up doing, I usually don't do, I, I have never used an entire jar of instant coffee. But the reason I did is because my fabric came out too light and I wasn't happy with it and I wanted it darker and so I used this and I succeeded with what I wanted to do. So I will show you the fabric in a little bit. Let me show you, I've got these really cool envelopes. I have to move my chair here. I just want to show you how I do this. Move all this. Oh. I don't necessarily need to be in frame, but what I'm doing is I have this poor um, hot glove that is just toast from coffee staining, which is fine with me. I've got these envelopes in my bath right now, and I get them at Hobby Lobby, their paper studio, and they are... 8.875 inches by 3.875 inches. It's a really weird size. The centimeters, centimeters are 22 by 0.54 centimeters by 9.84 centimeters. And there's 25 pieces. So they're roughly 8.5 by 3.5 envelopes. They're really cool. I like this size. And I'm going to show you how I do this. 
I use these cookie sheets. I get them. I've talked about it before. I get these at, you can get them at Walmart for, I think they just went up to like 93 cents. They were 88 cents for the longest time. Or you can get them at the Dollar Tree. And I think they're like 9 by 13, something like that. Okay, 10 by 13. But what I do is, here's these envelopes. And the top always comes out cool because the bath is a little lower than the top layer I have here. So I can fit two of these on my little pan. And then let's say, let's put them on the front. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm putting them on the flaps on this side. I'm putting the flap face down. Okay. And then I'm going to take this piece of lace. I'm just going to drop it in the bath and wet it real quick. I'm not trying to stain it, but that is the benefit of doing this. You get stained lace. As long as you use natural fibers, anyway. And then I just lay this on top of whatever I want that print to come out on. And then I keep going and I make a big stack here. And I put them on hot pads to protect my counter. I've got two hot pads over here. And then I just start building my stack and I just uh, jigsaw these back and forth until I build them up really high and then I start putting them in the oven. So let me do a couple more. I'll do some leaves real quick because you saw the lace. So these are nice little, they're just scrapbooking paper. And this paper is, I would consider this kind of a thicker cardstock. If you cut these with too thin a paper, they are going to fall apart because you're getting them wet repeatedly. So let me put these on and then I will show you this closer up. And it just takes a little bit of design, you know. And you really want to push them down. I was also, I wanted to show you a couple more things before I forget. This is my spatter brush. And I have a collection of lids here. Here's a couple of them. And I will just take this and dip it into my bath and then spin it on. But this has to be dry to do it. Once I pull this out of the oven, I do it while it's dry. And then here's my spatter brush. And it's just a real kind of a rough, it's dry. It's a rough bristled brush. And same thing, I'll just dip this into my bath and spatter it on my papers right when I take them out of the oven. I used to have this spatter station set up. And it's just much easier to do it right when you take them out. So here's how these look on the pan. And I'll make sure to adhere these all the way down before I put them in. You just want to do it as you go. This one's being a little difficult, but that can create a problem. So what you can do is take your spatter brush and wet it and wet the parts that are sticking up and they'll lay right down for you just like that, okay? Then you can get good adhesion and a really nice print. Okay, and you can do it with any kind of die cut you want. I pulled these out and did a batch the other day and was amazed at the results. So I wanted to share it with you today. And I really love the lace too. So that is my setup. <clears throat> that is my system. And when I do my papers... I have two rows in my oven, so I do four of these cookie sheets at a time. And I never put, I always put my oven at 275 and bake. And I never go higher than that, and I never leave the kitchen 
unless I'm just running to grab my cup of coffee or something silly like that. But you don't want to leave this unattended and you don't want to forget that you've got papers in your oven. And it's safe to go. I was told by Mrs. Cog to do 275 and no higher. So that's what I do. I, you know, I see videos of people who have done it and have experience and I trust their experience. So that is where I got that number from. And I will be back in a little bit to show you the fabric I did and some of the papers. But this is how I do it and I hope that this helps you in your coffee steaming adventures. <laughs> Okay, so I want to show you a little bit more stuff that I did um, with the die cuts and stuff. So here's a nice batch of all kinds of goodies and I'll go through them quickly. Alright, this was some more of the die cuts that I did. And it does it, it only prints on the side you do it. On. And then when these came out of the oven, I just um, did my little lid and some spatter. Here's some gears. You can do any die cut. This is a window. And then this right here is a little bit of a doily. Got some feathers here. This die cut I got at Michael's. I should probably tell. This one I got at Joann's. This is Tim Holtz, and I can't remember where I got it. I think these, this is a long Tim Holtz die cut. It's one of the really long, narrow ones, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Feathers at Michaels, can't remember the company. These feathers came with stamps. It was a stamp and die cut kit. Okay, and then there's a real faded version of the window. When you don't have good adhe adhesion between your die cut and the paper, it, you get a faded look. Okay, and then these are just some spattered pages. These are actually, I think, 5 by 7 I'm making some smaller journals. So I'm using these, yeah, five by seven roughly. Mm -hmm. That's what those are. I like this size, cute. Okay, and then I did some book pages. Now I did a lighter batch, so you can uh, just do a couple, I don't know, a couple few tablespoons of the instant coffee in with a couple of pots of coffee if you're going to do as big a batches as I do and um, you can get lighter like this so you don't have to have the real dark these sacks I love these I got these at Hobby Lobby and they're in the scrapbooking section I think they're, the label is sacks and things but they are paper studio so they go on sale all the time so die cut these are all die cuts I think and then a doily This is a piece of lace that I didn't have good adhesion. There's a cute one. I love these sacks. I think they came out so cute. Here's half lace and then all this little foliage. And then this is going to get folded in half right down that. So that'll be in a signature and it'll look like two totally different pages really fun. These die cuts and coffee staining are a kick. Takes some design and it takes more time than just slapping the paper on the tray and throwing it in the oven. This, you know, it's a little more time consuming. Okay, there's those. I will be back. I did some lace ones. I'm running out of daylight. I did some lace papers and I want to show them to you so please forgive my filming situation here 
Okay, I'm having some weird overcast lighting situation going on, so I turn on my lamp and I hope this is okay. Uh, this is, I told you I was going to do some lace papers, and this was a scrap I had in my bath, and this came out in the coffee bath. This came out so perfect and beautiful, and there is a trick to it. I talked about it earlier, I told you. So this is just some scrapbooking paper. This is where I didn't get great adhesion, and I got the bubbles, but it still looks really cool. But I was putting the lace on dry, and when I, I'll show you. Here's some dry pages, and then I'll show you what happened when I wet the lace and then put it on. It's still really cool paper. None of this has been ironed yet. All this stuff needs to be ironed, so forgive that, but I'm running out of daylight, so if I iron it, I won't be able to film this till tomorrow. And I wanted to film it today. So that's where, you know, you get the idea. That's where it bubbled. This one came out really cool. I love it. And then some of them printed a little bit on the back side which is nice because then you get your double sided okay this has a big had a big bubble in it but I think it's still still here's another one like that then this one is a little better clearer really crispy really pretty on both sides just very workable junk journal paper here I'm going to probably put some of these in my Etsy store. I'll do a quick announcement when I do that. Make it a digital kit. I'm still learning how to do all that stuff, and I'm kind of slow, so <laughs> bear with me. Help me. Any of the above. All of the above. <laughs> okay, so you get the idea. When you, I, I would just put the lace in the bath, and when I did that, I got phenomenal results. Here's a really pretty one, and it's lighter. I'm not sure why, but it's really pretty. And this is just copy paper, regular print paper, which I really love to work with this. It is very delicate when it's wet, but it can be manhandled just enough to where you can do a lot of really cool stuff with it. Okay that one all right I did some book pages these came out beautiful also I did not I hope I was in frame dang it I didn't spatter any of these because I figure the artwork you know speaks plenty and then on the back of these these are all detailed and then the back gives you what kind of light it needs and what time of year it blooms and where it blooms and some good information. I'd love to figure out a way to junk journal with these and use both sides. I'll probably make this a booklet and just stitch and then you'll be able to, it'll be the outer cover and the inner cover maybe. These are so pretty. Let me grab the book I got these out of so I can show you that. Okay, this is the book, The New Concise British Flora by W. Kebley Barton. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, I watched the video that... Uh, Tracy, Lo Tracy Fox Love Junk Journals had on about all the books she uses and it inspired me to buy some and I got this on eBay and I'm really happy I did because it's gorgeous. I only used a little of it. I've only stained a little of it. Just Actually, I've got probably a third of it out and coffee stained so and it's just full every page is like this the front's like this the back is like that I am so excited to get these ironed and messed with these grow all over my area there this is um, rose hip okay 
little bit of botanical info for you. All right, so now I'm just going to go through these a little. I did these, and I did them with two pots of coffee and like three tablespoons of instant coffee and four cups of water. And they came out really light, and it was a total bummer. Let me zoom in. So what I did was I made that bath I told you about earlier. Okay, two pots of coffee, an entire jar of instant coffee. No extra water. That's what this is. And I'm much happier now. Came out a lot darker. I got a bunch of trim. Go through it quickly. Got this lace. I got some. I did a bunch of the cheesecloth. And I really like the color it came out. And like I said in another video, I think... Um, you can spray these with Tim Holtz Distress, Distress Spray on this cheesecloth and get a bunch of different colors. So that's an option too. I really love how this came out. Really pretty little lace trim. And these doilies came out really nice. And they've got a lot of variation in hue. There's a lot of light and a lot of dark. Just show you a few of these. I love these. I can't wait to use these. I'm excited to have all this done. This is, um, back you up a little. These are four, oh, I wish I would have ironed. Four linen placemats with all the embroidering in it. I think the camera's picking it up a little. And they came out quite grungy and I love them. I'm totally happy with that. Can't wait to cut them up. There's that one. I got four of these. I used to go to a lot of auctions. I had a little store so I was at auctions all the time and it is a great place to get vintage linens and vintage laces. And then I just did a piece of muslin fabric, so. And I really love the color it came out to. It looks nice and old and it smells like vanilla nut coffee. Everything does, which I love. And the only thing I would have done different, I think I already said it earlier. I forget what I say is um, I would have put a cup of vinegar in with the fabric. So that's it. I'm running out of daylight. I hope this was helpful. Please give it a shot and show me what you're doing. I would love to see it. Um, be careful with synthetic lace. I would not put that in your oven. Okay, have a great day and thanks for joining me.